right, left, right, left, right, left. This is the story of ten soldiers with one ambition, to fly helicopters for the army. After 11 and a half months, course 354 is nearly at an end. Right, two o'clock. Got it. Four would-be pilots have failed the training and had to return to their old units. Everything we've taught you here, stick to the basics. Now the six who remain are just one step away from their wings. But their toughest test is still to come. It's an early wake-up for course 354. They've swapped their base in Hampshire for the barracks of Premington. They're here to fight a war. Uncle Rooney. Another day. So who are you at war with? I don't know if I can tell you, but I'm going to have to kill you. <laughs> you see, it's all top secret and classified and shit. Like that. Yeah. They invade Cornwall every six weeks. It still can't be us. Citizens of Britain, our shores have been breached by an invasion force from Ormidia. The Prime Minister called it a naked act of aggression and has promised to fight back and repel these most unwelcome invaders. Course 354 have been given the ultimate task to defend the realm against the forces of Ormidia, an imaginary socialist republic untouched by the end of the Cold War. The Ormidians, equipped with Soviet arms, have waged war on Britain. Now it's 354's task to stop them. Following a series of battles during the night, the enemy has failed to make further progress through 2RGJ area. Mission, to report enemy in the Ford battle group areas in order to assist in building an intelligence picture. Just look up a second. The exercise is treated as a real wartime operation. The trainees have been given the job of finding the Ormidians and tracking their movements as they make their advance from Cornwall into Devon. At bingo fuel, then recover back to the squadron location using the reverse of the route out. Having received their orders, the trainees work out the best route to the front line. They're looking for positions where they'll be able to observe the enemy without being observed themselves. Right, from here, you've got a re-entrant running off. Sweet. Ridge about 500 metres, you've got a brownfield with scrub on it. The trainees are no longer piloting the helicopters. They leave that to their instructors. They're now commanding the aircraft, directing every aspect of the mission. They have to stay as low as possible, under the radar horizon. And height below 150 feet. Roger. They're operating in pairs. Corporal Mark Hitch is on patrol with Lieutenant Jenny Firth. So we should have a road coming in on the right, stand here. Yeah. Um, so we're not far. Yeah. From there onto heading of 155, please. 155, Still saying, please. Stop it. <laughs> what uh, we're trying to depict is a tactical exercise away from Middle Wall so that the students get used to operating in a new area that there is totally unfamiliar to them and in a setting that also will be unfamiliar to them. Okay, now I have to admit here, I know we're going in the right direction, but I'm not quite sure where we are. Roger. So if we make Slowly. train, then um, well, well, we'll get to the river, the main river. I know we haven't got any ADAs that we should hit, having set up on 100. Roger. Zero. Um, Map reading at 50 feet and below 
is extremely testing because every valley looks like each other. Uh, and the, we have to tell them uh, that to go back to basics in uh, low level map reading. And that is a lesson that comes out certainly on day one and day two of every course that comes down here. Keep your map down as well because you're, you're blocking out half my cockpit view. Hold the damn thing down, you can sleep under it at the moment. It's climbing slightly. We've got to cross these pylons now, have we? 12 o'clock. Yes, sir. Okay. These are the sort of things I need to know, you see. Deep in the heart of Devon, the enemy waits. Two Land Rovers and a truck representing the Ormidian forces. This enemy has the unusual advantage of being able to listen in as the pursuers track them down. Once the Ormidians have been correctly identified, they'll acknowledge the sighting and the mission will be over. But that's easier said than done. Mark Hitch is struggling to find a position where he can see the target area without revealing himself to the enemy. The, uh, left, 11 o'clock, you've got two uh, prominent uh, like dead trees on top of the ridge line there. Yeah. Can you move up to that area there, please? Yeah, don't get tunnel vision, remember. OK, look out. Look at the wider picture. All right, what's, uh, what is, what's the problem at the moment? It's quite exposed down the 12 o'clock. Yeah, if you put us up on there, what, what is that going to do to us? us? Can you see the target on the heading at the moment? Okay, come on to a heading about 243. Hold on, what I'm trying to do here is, is sort of give you an idea. You cannot see even the area that you're looking for, can you? Because there is another spur feature between us and the enemy. So for me to move up to the trees to the left, or us to move up to the trees to the left, it's going to do absolutely no use at all, is it? So what do you think we've got to do now? Move up. We've got to move forward, haven't we, at some point? We sat for a long time in a piece of dead ground looking across another piece of dead ground at another hill, which is absolutely useless, really. OK? The, the point we ended up in was far too close to the enemy. So on that side of life, you got suckered forward, all right? Um, we were probably within about 1,500 metres. So uh, somebody with a Kalashnikov and who was a good shot could probably take you out of that distance. Um, Another method of possibly achieving this mission? Mum? Um, you piped up on the radio with it. Sounded a very gutsy move. <laughs> if you look at the map, you can see that um, the valley that we were down had a river there. And the enemy were in this area here, and there's another river going up to the northeast. Okay. So I hope just to take them by surprise and go very fast and very low and have the person on the right hand side looking out. Okay. So what, the command, the... what would the command and control aspects of that be? Limited. So what you've got to ask yourself is, who's going to do it? Who do you want to risk? Yeah, exactly, and how are you going to do it? Yeah. So you've got to know, through your mission analysis, whether the CO, or in particular divisional commander, is willing to risk you and a million pounds worth of helicopter to get that information. So this is something you've got to assess in your mission analysis, yeah? How expendable you are, for the want of a better word. We're expendable the same as any other soldier on the battlefield. The next pair on patrol are faring no better. Where are we at the moment? So I'll try to get set. Second Lieutenant Andy James is lost. Five, nine, Operating at low level, it's easy to lose your bearings. Five, three. Five, three, three, zero. To make matters worse, Andy is tuned in to the wrong frequency and has lost radio contact with his partner, Corporal David Rooney. Corporal Rooney's instructions are falling on deaf ears. Andy can hear nothing but interference. Five three three zero five nine distance is in Strawbridge. Hang on, let me just see the map. Take one second out. Five three three. That's not zero five nine. Let's get the right grid plotted. Just slow up a bit. Get the grid. 
Corporal Rooney can only wait for Andy to sort out his problems and resume the mission. And off he goes. He's pulling himself back off the high ground to get himself uh, a route out. Yeah, I'd like him to acknowledge him. Remember that for you, the bee brain. Hello. Eventually, Andy manages to regain radio contact and the patrol is back on track. But now the Ormidians give him something else to worry about. November 309. They've launched a simulated air-to-air -air attack. When Andy gets the message, he has to take immediate evasive action. An aircraft under attack should get down as low as possible and take cover. Andy has managed this, but not quickly enough. Corporal Rooney's helicopter has been hit and suffered casualties. Andy must now assume control. And we'll contact the zero. Hang on, hang on, forget that. He's been hit. We'll have to take it back. Control, Commander, what are you going to do about it? Take it back to the uh, Phil Oster on our way there anyway. Carry on, pilot, pilot, staple. Tell him to follow. Are you able to follow? Roger, one time got the answer there. By the end of the afternoon, the patrol returns to base without having found the Ormidians. Andy's poor planning and radio work are being held to blame. The instructors are now concerned about him. This was his second mission of the day, and he's shown no signs of improvement. He just got totally bogged down. Everything just went out the window. We got more or less lost. We didn't know where we were. Tactics were a non-event. Radios were non-event, and the whole thing just really came to a grinding halt. So we came home. But um, I think he can do it, but he needs to buck up. Right, I flew him this afternoon, and for a supporting man, he was not pulling out the stops. He needs to get a lot more fiery. Needs to be a lot more with it. He tends to just sit back, and you'll concur from earlier. He tends to just sit back and allow. The situation to wash over him. So I'll be looking for him tomorrow when he reflies as the commander to demonstrate quite a lot more aggression and general spark. He's had a very comprehensive debrief off the last patrol, both from the uh, patrol commanders and my point of view, and he should have a reasonably good idea of where he's got to go. So he's certainly not firing on all the cylinders at the moment. Is that one of yours? That's yours. The course is almost over, but it's never too late to fail. Even at this stage, people have been chopped from the course. For Andy, another bad flight tomorrow, and he'll be in serious trouble. So it's, um, it's been a bad day, is it? <laughs> it's all right. It's one of my better ones. <laughs> it's quite, um... It's quite, should I say. It's very hard work. It's all good and well getting... Everything's sorted, or thinking you've got everything sorted, but finding out when you get out of there that you haven't quite. Um, it's quite hard work. Planning side, you think you got squared away, and then you realise you've actually uh, not really, because you've forgotten about fifty thousand things. That perhaps you, sh you should remember to do. So, uh, no, it's it's hard, and it's um, it's quite annoying when you okay, you can learn a lot of things, but it's quite irritating um, to do badly, or not, you know, not too particularly well. I wouldn't say badly, I'm just not happy with the, with the way it's gone today. I hate having shit days. <laughs> Should be alright tomorrow. And following the road up to the left, the first IP is the high ground. Andy James knows he's on trial. He's been put in charge of his patrol today and he's trying hard to impress. Exploit. 200 hang meters on, to hang on, hang on, hang on. Right, 10 o'clock. Get one thing done to the left. 10 right, coming into our 12 o'clock wood line. High, high ground is um, our OP position. Right, can we still see where we are? Yes, we can. That's fine, then. Give it a push. We've got a mean road. We've got a pylon. According to the scenario, the Ormidian advance has been halted. Now the counter-attack can begin. 
The trainees have no weapons themselves, but they'll direct the artillery offensive. Come and give them some space. Roger. Right, move forward to the hedge line between these two trees. I can't see anything because they're obscured by the trees. After 40 minutes on patrol, Andy has guided his helicopter within two miles of the Ormidian lines. If he's got his map reading right, he should be able to see the enemy from here. Watch it. Looking for the high ground. To scan the horizon, he uses a gyro-stabilized periscope mounted on the roof of the cockpit. Andy spotted some vehicles in a distant lay-by. It may be the Ormidians, so he switches to high magnification to get a better look. Climb two, up to two. What's happening? Hello, hotel two, zero sighting, wait out. Right, we've got a sighting in front of us. Thanks for telling me. Roger, uh, sighting, it was in our 12 o'clock reference, tell them, reference wood. Sighting. Roger, he's got a sighting. Reference um, wood, 200 metres to the left. Guess that means we must be somewhere near the correct area, eh? Absolutely. Roger, this is Falcon 14, Falcon 5, it's in back here. Andy has successfully located the enemy position. So he calls up the artillery unit to launch an attack on the Ormidians. All oh, right, okay. I've just been speaking to. Hello, X-ray. I want to say this is Golf 14 Foxtrot. Fire mission battery, Evan. Okay, nothing. But he has a new problem. His radio has gone down again, and he can't make contact with the gunners. Three one zero. This is your radio check, Evan. It takes Andy five minutes to reroute his radio message through another command post. On a real battlefield, five minutes lost at this stage could be critical. Artillery shells should now be destroying the enemy target. But this is an exercise, and the shells are all imaginary. And he has to make do with his instructor's assurances. Right, tree rolling. Okay, I think we can effectively say that we've uh, stomped that lot nicely. We're on task elsewhere now, so watch it. Okay, one, two, this is Bell, four, three, a four shot, a target destroyed, head of mission, have a... For Andy, the flight has been a definite improvement. He didn't get lost this time, and he managed a successful fire mission, despite the radio problem. Now, uh, there it went. Uh, all right, I suppose. Yeah, that was all right. That's all right, but we couldn't get comms either when we tried to send the... Uh, no, I went for zero again. Oh, I went for zero again. So the guns went less than out in Oh, it's fun, that was Yeah, I quite enjoyed that. You could see that you were working at it and persevering. He, he was really, really trying to help you. The stuff he was saying to me, I'm going, no. <laughs> we tried all frequencies for Hotel 2-0, yeah, didn't we? we couldn't every, every time, I, I felt so embarrassed, I'd think I'm such a biff, because like, every time they'd go, shot over, and I'd go, shot out, or I wouldn't quite hear it and stuff, and they'd go, hello, Golf 43 Fox, this is Zero from Hotel 2-0, ready over, and I'd go, <laughs> ready for <far> over. <laughs> I think it's been a very successful exercise. And I believe that actually the students have learnt an awful lot in really what is very testing countryside. Do they pick up a, a tactical awareness here? They are beginning to. Bearing in mind this is very early in their flying career, all we're trying to do is just to give them a feel for what it is like in a squadron life within the resources that we have available at the School of Army Aviation. How could we run? I think we won. The Ormidians have been defeated. Course 354 have thwarted their invasion of Britain. Before any of the trainees command the helicopter in a real war zone, they'll have to do more specialist training. But this has been their first taste of wartime tactics, and despite the problems, they've survived.
They leave Devon knowing that the hard work is behind them. They've completed the most critical test of the course. Back at base, the trainees land for the last time. They'll have a final debrief to find out their grades, then that's it. Twelve months of intensive training are over. So, for the base tonight, then. Andy James has just had his debrief and been given the good news. Yeah, congratulations, Good one. He's only achieved an average pass, but it's a pass. He's qualified as an army pilot. Good effort, sir. Yeah. Good effort. Thanks. Hey, a pilot. Yeah. yeah. Really? Oh, really? All right. Yes. Yeah, um, this is good. So, you made it. I have. Um. Quite, quite a. I don't know. I hope it hasn't really sunk in yet. It's only been less than an hour, so. Um. A relief. That's all I can say. I know people can look around and say, yeah, you give the attitude that you, you know, you're very blasé and you're a bit of a hoorah and, you know, completely wrong attitude. But at the end of the day, looking back, it meant more than anything to me to pass this. You know, and it was a bloody long course and it was, uh, you know, something from a year ago, you're looking to seeing people pass out thinking, oh, am I ever going to get there? And to Tring. eventually do it. And, um, Tring. yeah, I think I've grown up a bit. Tring. Mature attitude. Mark Hitch has struggled on every stage of the training, but he's defied expectations and made it to the end of the course with a respectable pass. Well done, Mark. <laughs> hey, hey. Well done, Mark. Stand by, they're letting me loose. <laughs> it's all over. It's a relief. Big relief. Big relief. It's been a long year. Yeah, hated it. Hated it all. Anybody want some maps of wallop? Because I ain't gonna f need them ever again. <laughs> Every day for the past year, you've been assessed. Big Brother's yeah. always watching. You know, they're always making write ups about you and uh, looking at what you're doing, how you're doing it. Good. Which I know that everyone feels is, uh, it is one of those things in middle wallop. Now I'm going to maybe start enjoying the flying because I'm going to be going to a squadron. I'm not going to be assessed all the time. Do you always think you're going to get there? No. Just took each stage as it came. And if you get through the end of uh, end of phase ride, then all being well, move on to the next phase. Only this time there's no phase to move on, move on to, except leave. it's the day of the wings parade the day the trainees become pilots and in their honor the chief of the general staff the top soldier in the army is presenting the awards presentation of wings to 354 army pilot course lieutenant Jenny Firth posted to 3 regiment army air corps at Wattisham Very many congratulations. Thank you. That's excellent. Very good indeed. How do you find the course? Very, very enjoyable. Sir. Quite hard, Quite wasn't it? I really think it's very hard work. Obviously, the immediate future holds uh, going to my new unit and going on exercise pretty, pretty sharpish. And then I shall uh, commit it to three years flying with them and then a fourth year, which, which I understand that I may choose to fly in, although um, often you're given a desk job for your final year. And that'll take me way beyond the end of my short service commission. So by then I'll, uh, I'll become a civvy at the end of it all. Well done, so. man. I'll see you later.
Jenny doesn't see her long-term future as an army pilot. She'll serve her time and leave. Corporal David Rooney, Army Air Corps. Post of five Others want to spend the rest of their lives at the controls of a helicopter. Well done. Many yeah, congratulations. Excellent. I always wanted to be a professional pilot now, Arm. Never wanted to be anything else. Barra, barra pilot. What else is there to do? It's the best job out. Well done. Second Lieutenant Andrew James, Army Air Corps, posted the 5 Regiment Army Air Corps in Northern Ireland. Very congratulations. Hold on. What are you going to be flying? A Lynx or a Gazelle? Yes, gazelle, right? Yes, yes. Where do you do your infantry attachment? Um, in Northern Ireland, sir, with the Royal Welsh Fusiliers. Do you? Ah, so you will be there for how long? I was there for seven months. Okay. Congratulations, then. Yes, look, look at the camera. Well done. General Little, ladies and gentlemen, it's been a very great pleasure for me to present the wings and the trophies today to the latest Army Pilots course. I know that to pass the course and graduate as a military pilot, you had to work hard, you had to overcome many problems and show considerable single-mindedness and determination. You've achieved a very great deal, and you should be rightfully proud of what you've done. At the start of their training, the ten members of 354 had their course photograph taken. No one at that stage knew what lay ahead. A year later, only six have made it to the final photo session. These six flying soldiers can now be posted to a war zone anywhere in the world.